Raktar had been sent to this planet to help maintain order in the new colony they had set up here. He was an experienced Katovrian general who had earned the respect of his subordinates. Currently, he was staring at a hollow display showing five destroyers, 20 cruisers and three carriers, with innumerable smaller crafts inside. This was a convoy meant to break through a planet's defences and either capture or kill anyone that resisted on the planet, and to do it quickly. They were also, obviously, Sumaltian ships. The Katavorians had been negotiating with the Sumaltians for weeks now. They wanted to use this star as a star base, allowing for easier trade and a greater military presence in the area. The only issue is that it requires some of the planets as building material, including the one Raktar was currently standing on. Raktar had been meeting with the Katavorian Council, who were drawing up new plans and agreements on trade and military activity for the Somaltions. The Somalitons had had an issue with every plan they had proposed so far. That's when they got the final offer from the Somaliatons. Unconditional surrender, and they wouldn't raise the planet. Raktar ordered an immediate scan of the surrounding space and discovered the convoy. The entire negotiation had just been deployed to buy time. The council sent out a request to help immediately after seeing the convoy, but Raktar already knew there was no hope out there. The Somaliatong convoy was only two weeks away, where the next nearest ships were three weeks away. It was a human convoy of only ten cruisers. The humans sent an immediate reply, we will be there to help as quickly as we can. While on a grand gesture, it was of little help. The human would arrive to an already wrecked planet, and then would promptly get wiped out. It was still more than what everyone else offered. The humans had been a bit of a strange race in the galaxy. They weren't that dangerous or crafty, nor did they cause more problems than most other races. It's just whenever we questioned them about these issues, they would say it wasn't them but some other group. However, it was just another group of humans. They didn't seem to have the same issue when it was a good deed. They seemed to be saying that they were spreading throughout the galaxies as many species, managing to conquer space travel while still competing against one another. The humans appeared to care little for what you were, whether that was human or alien. You could be an enemy or ally. The council sent out a reply. We graciously accept this offer of assistance, and will be forever grateful for your help. An empty thanks for empty assistance. Raktar worked on solving the problem at hand. The end of his world. However, no solutions came to mind. He sent out surprise attacks with his fastest missiles, but the Somaliatons were already ready, and the missiles were easily intercepted. Days ticked by with Raktar trying out different tricks, hoping to slip through a crack in their armour. However, the Katavorian world was then in range of the Somaliaton missiles, forcing them to activate their shields, now only able to hide like a turtle in its shell. The Somaliatons continued firing missiles, none of which would destroy the planet, but each could cripple the defence shield. As they bombarded the world, the Smaliatons' convoy slowly creeped forward until the two weeks had passed and they sat on the Katavorian's doorstep with the destroyers almost fully charged. Raktar stood at the hollow display, as he had been every day the last two weeks. Severely sleep deprived but still searching for a solution. The Smaliaton cruisers kept up the barrage forcing our shields up. As Raktar stared at the display showing the scans of the battlefield, he thought he saw something briefly blink into existence behind the Smaliaton's ships. It was too small to be a ship, and was only there for a second, but Raktar still leaned in, focusing on that area. Soon hundreds of little things were blinking into existence and then disappearing. Then, a big red dot appeared at the same point as a Smaliaton cruiser, a direct hit. The Smaliaton convoy was being bombarded. Give me a visual shot of what just happened, Raktar barked out and soon there was an image of a Somaliaton cruiser on the display. In slow motion, Raktar watched a missile coasting in. Each blimp of light must have been the final course correction for the missile, gliding the rest of the way to avoid being detected. Whoever had shot these managed to get a complete blindsight attack on the Somalian convoy. Most of the ships didn't even have time to activate their shields. As if to answer everyone's thoughts on who their mysterious saber was, the transmission line cracked to life. This is the United Mars 45th Patrol Squad. We made it as quick as we could, the transmission line said. The United Mars was a human faction, as they called them, with their main base being on the fourth planet in the original human solar system. The patrol squads didn't carry heavy weaponry. They were mostly there to help clear out asteroids, help ships that ran into trouble, and settle minor squabbles between groups. Raktar held down the transmission button and said, We weren't expecting anyone to make it in time. We appreciate the help. 
It won't be enough to take down the destroyers, but it gives us a fighting chance. That was a lie. Even with taking down or crippling all the cruisers and carriers, the five destroyers would still fire and raise most of the players before we could stop them. Raktar hoped that the humans had advanced more than just their propulsion systems. Hopefully they had a secret weapon with them too. The transmission line sprang to life again. We couldn't leave you out to dry, we know how hard it is to set up in a new world. I do have one request though, could you send out a rescue squad to come pick up the rest of my boys? Ragdar didn't know what to make of this. How could the humans be so certain of his victory, but also certain that he wouldn't be able to land himself? Before he could think, an answer though, one of the reconnaissance officers spoke up. They are going too fast, they won't be able to stop. In a split second, Ragtar realised that the humans hadn't managed any propulsion advances. They simply fired the engines without leaving enough time to stop. But why? They should know that they wouldn't be able to stop the destroyers with the weapons they had. Then it clicked. Show me their trajectory, Ragtar shouted at a reconnaissance officer. In a second it was up. The 45th patrol squad was making a direct path towards the destroyers. Ragtar jumped on the transmission. Change your trajectory immediately. You can still just do a flyby. A reply came back from the human ship, but we didn't understand what it meant. Then the first ship slammed into the destroyer. The Smaliatons had already put the shields up on the destroyers, but it didn't matter. The shields were meant to disrupt missiles and take small explosions, something like a nuclear bomb. It stood no chance against the force of a cruiser at full speed. The destroyer's armour didn't fare much better as the cruiser slammed into, ripping it apart. The second cruiser followed up, smashing into the same destroyer. Each of the human cruisers smashed into the destroyers on kamikaze runs. In just a few seconds, where the destroyers had stood, there was just scrap metal. The whole room sat in dead silence. Just a little while ago, everyone had been preparing for death and the death of everyone on the planet. Now they were handed victory on a silver platter. Ragtar finally broke the science. Prepare a rescue mission. Should we ask for permission from the council? An officer asked. No, Ragtar said before sitting in his chair. There was a rush of activity as everyone jumped to work to show their gratitude. A scan shows several emergency lifeboats sending out distress signals from the direction the human convoy had come from. A few days later, the emergency lifeboats were picked up and the whole story learned. The 45th patrol squad had jettisoned everything they could to lighten the ships up, which included the crew. The only thing left on the ships were missiles, fuel, and the captain. They all cheered when they heard the attack had been successful, but it was nothing when we told them the captain's final words. The entire 45th patrol squad went wild. yippee ki motherfucker.